It is currently 2 a.m. and I should be in bed right now, but I'm not because about three hours ago, I was introduced to the new Photoshop beta and one of the new features, Generative Fill, has absolutely blown my mind and I think it is honestly going to change photography forever. Photography as we know it has changed in this new version of Photoshop and I wanted to share that with you because it has literally blown my mind and I'm going to get straight into Photoshop now and show you some of what this new tool can do. It is on believable. This is not clickbait. This is unbelievable technology. Whether it's going to change photography for the better, I, I don't know. It could well be for the worse, but it's going to change the game completely. And that's why I had to make this video. So basically, Photoshop Beta is now available for you to download if you are a current subscriber to Adobe's Creative Cloud, which I am. And up until this point, I've not actually bothered downloading it because it's a beta version. It's going to be all buggy. I don't really need that. But when I saw this new feature, I just had to have a go and it has blown my mind as I keep on saying. So basically what it does, it uses AI to create new content in photographs, whether that's removing old content and replacing it or stretching out an existing image and then creating new content for the new stretched out areas I'm going to show you here. So this is a photograph that I've taken at Vicky and Ken's wedding in Iceland. I did a video on this one, which I will link to up here. And what I'm going to do here is just stretch it out to make it more landscape. Let's go quite far. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Now I'm going to use the select tool just to go over this area. And this is the new feature, generative fill. So let's just click on this. And we're well, going to talk about this bit in a second, but now just click generate. And in the past, we would have used content aware fill for this and it wouldn't have done a great job. It would have been a bit messy, but just wait until you see what it's going to do here. I don't even know what to say. It's crazy. The reason that this takes a little bit of time is it is generating the content from the cloud. But look at that. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And it also gives you three options that we can use. We could use this version. I mean, they are all insane. Unbelievable. There was the old version there, and that's how we've expanded it out. And when you zoom in, you'd be hard pressed to even tell where the join is. Okay, this is a photograph I've taken of Demi. Again, there's a video about how I created this image, which I'll link to up here. And for this one, I'm going to cut across Demi here. Now, this is the amazing thing. In this box here, we can type in what we want Photoshop to create for us. So I'm going to put create a reflection. Generate. Again, it's doing this in the cloud, so that's why it takes a little bit of time. Remember as well, this is the beta version. It will get better than this. Look at that. I mean, it is unbelievable. Let's just actually try this again. I'm going to delete that layer. I wonder if we can, if we even type in make a reflection with grass. Look at that. Crazy. I mean... <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what to say. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And again, there's the original. Remember, it's really important to remember this. This is the beta version. This is not even the finished version. With this one here, I thought, let's just play around. Let's cover this area. Again, I'm just using the lasso tool. And I'm going to put in foreground lamp. I mean, this, this sort of technology opens up so many questions. I mean, this is not really photography anymore. This is going into digital art. This is just image making. It's almost like we're going to have two genres in the future, photography and image making. And I, I don't know where the line is. It's, it's a crazy time at the moment for photography. And this is just the, the biggest revolutionary change I think I've known since I've been a photographer, which is nearly 20 years now. And I don't make that claim lightly. I would not have thought I would be saying that sentence three hours ago. And there we go. It's just, it's just unbelievable. So I've selected a few images for this video, which I can just play around with. With this one, I'm going to expand this again. So this is a portrait photograph. Let's make it into a landscape photograph. And just as we did before, I'm going to select that area. In the past, I would have used content-aware fill, but I'm now going to use generative fill. 
I'm not going to fill it in. You don't need to put anything into that box. You can just leave it blank. And let's just see this time what Photoshop will do. When I tested this, I'm hoping it's going to be just as good as before because it was... Honestly, look at that. That is amazing. I, I honestly don't understand what's going on. Look at this. It's not just the fact that we can't even see the join. It's the fact that Photoshop has even continue the path up until the end here and if we don't like that version we can click on this version or this one it just looks so realistic and remember this was a portrait photograph this is crazy okay we're going to play with this one next when i came up with this idea i thought there's no way surely the photoshop is going to be able to do what i had in my mind and it did so let's just select this area here, but go a bit bigger. And I'm going to type in ring on finger. I was thinking there is no way, there is no way that Photoshop can possibly do this. Just watch. Look at that. There's two rings on fingers for you. In fact, so let's, let's try and make it so it's just one. Put ring on finger. Look at that. Unbelievable. Really nice photograph of bridesmaids holding the flowers. But can we change those flowers? Let's go around. Remember, I'm not doing this very neatly. This is just me being very loose on a trackpad. Let's put hands holding red roses. You will think it's just not possible. I, I would have thought it was not possible. I don't know what's I don't know what's real anymore. This is literally going to make you have to question every photograph you look at because the technology is here now ready, which can do this. It's unbelievable. I keep on saying the same thing. We can change the flowers around. You know, if you go in really close, maybe the hands aren't perfect. You can see there, it's not ideal. But remember, it's a beta version. But it's it's not bad. It is not bad. And look what it's done. It's literally changed the flowers. Now, this one I had a lot of fun with. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to select this painting and just ask Photoshop to delete it. So I'm going to type anything into the generative fill box. Don't know what it's doing there. That'd be a wild one. But look at that. Really well done. That looks a bit strange there. So it, let's just make another line. Generative fill, generate. There we go. That is more or less perfect. And that would have taken me... I don't know, an hour plus to do that manually. But now we do it in literally seconds. But we can also have a bit more fun with this one. Let's just delete those layers. Let's go over here. Let's just select the painting area. And now let's put in old painting of Venice. This wedding was not in Venice, but hey ho. There we go. Look at that. That one works really well. And we go in close. And it is so scarily good. As I said at the beginning, this is game changing. This is revolutionary. Now with this image, again, I was just trying to test it. I love this photograph. And I love it because of the composition with this lady in the foreground smiling away. I love the hug. Love everything about it. But I was thinking, how could... Photoshop possibly get rid of this person. I don't want to get rid of this person, by the way, because she's really making the photograph. But let's just show you what Photoshop Beta can now do by going round here, making that selection. Remember, it's not an accurate selection, really. But I would have thought that this would be virtually impossible, if not impossible, because we don't know what is behind. Normally, if you were going to try and remove this person, you'd need to know more information about the, the fencing behind, about the gate. You'd need to know more information about the flowers to recreate that. But now, I don't know where that person's come from. <laughs> I don't know who that person is. That is, I don't even know what to say. Look at this. There we go. When I did it before, it was even more, it was more accurate. But it's, it's not, not as good this time, but it's very, very, very close. So each time you do it, it's slightly different. Okay, with this one, again, I've long loved this photograph. I went back in the archives for some of these, but the Toastmaster being behind isn't ideal. So let's make a rough selection here, see what we can do. This would have been nigh on impossible in the past to, to clone out the Toastmaster. 
Now, within just a few short seconds, we can get rid of them really easily. Look at that. That is crazy good. And can you even tell in the hair? Honestly, this is, as you can see now, this isn't clickbait. This is serious. This is unbelievable technology that is going to change photography forever. Okay, another image here where I thought, can I trick Photoshop? I should have realized now that I can't do that. <laughs> Let's try to expand this out a little bit further. I'm thinking, right, okay, how can you possibly know how to fill in this gap? In the past, anybody, if you've used Photoshop, you will know that it's nigh on impossible to do this because we just don't have the data in this photograph to know what should be there. Look at that. There we go. The first version, not ideal. Don't know what's going on there. The third version, yeah, don't, not bad. Not sure what's going on there. But this one, I mean, that, that could literally have been it. I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And then if we were to flatten this and just crop in now there, I defy anyone to have known that that background is not real. And the way that Photoshop has understood the width of the registrar's body to know where that should be and to fill in the hair. Remember, the original was that. This is crazy, crazy technology. Another one here from Iceland. I will link to this video up here where you can see how I created this photograph. But now we can make it crazy wide. Let's go really big. We haven't gone this far before. Let's just see what Photoshop can do here. So I'm going to select this area. And then if you ever hold down shift when you've made a selection, you can hold make another selection and it will combine the two. So we've got there. Again, let's now just see what Photoshop can do to fill in this gap. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> what is going on? Is I don't I mean, it's now nearly 3 a.m. I don't know if I'm dreaming. And you've not even got one option, you've got these other options. Oh, I love this one. I mean, it's all AI generated, but it's really cool. And if you don't like any of it, you can literally just go over it more. This is when I did the test of this, it's completely different to what it was before. In fact, I wonder if I could, I mean, let's go back. I mean, that one looks really accurate. Really, really accurate. Actually, we can see the join there, but what I could probably do is get rid of this bit and then just ask it to generate that area again. But when we get up here, it's very, very accurate. Again, just to remind you what the original looked like, it was that. And now we've got that. I don't know what to say anymore. Okay, so last couple of examples. We've got a group photograph here. I'm going to do something different this time. Let's select subject. So I'm going to invert that selection. And now let's type in beach scene. And let's just move them away from Abbey Wood Estate in Cheshire, where it was where Amelia and Jordan got married. And let's put them on a beach. There you go. No, I don't know what sort of beach that is. Bit better. But what I, what I think is crazy, I mean, let's face it, there are issues here. I don't know what's going on with Jordan's nose there. This is not accurate. Remember, this is beta. This is not the full version. But we can see the potential that's coming because the feet, it's almost like it's blended the feet onto the sand really well. When this gets more accurate, I'm sure you're not even going to be able to tell. And there's another beach scene. So original. Let's even change it. Let's say, let's put them in New York. Anybody who's listened to my podcast may get the reference, New York. It's very, sorry, it's very, very late or early. Is it late or is it early? Once you get to gone 3 a.m., is it very early or is it very late? I don't know. I'm losing my mind now. There we go. I don't know whereabouts this is in New York. Look at that, though. Again, sorry, Jordan. I apologize. Don't know what's going on here. Looks like you've been in the ring with Mike Tyson. But it's getting there. The technology is getting there. And last but not least, one of my favorite photographs of Beth from this video. I'm just going to just just for a laugh. I thought, can we add a tattoo onto Beth's leg? Obviously, we can. With the new Photoshop beta, you can do anything. Reality doesn't exist anymore. We're now just in some crazy world of make believe where your only limitation is your imagination and a little bit of the algorithm. So there you go. 
There are three leg tattoos you can have there, Beth. And just before we finish the video, I'm just going to try this one again because when I tested this, it was a lot better than we got before. So I just want to see if we can get that again because as I mentioned earlier, this I think is probably one of the most difficult jobs that I can imagine within Photoshop, trying to remove someone like this with so covering so much of the background, so much data that we don't have like the flowers like the gates and i just want to see if photoshop yeah there we go it's getting better yeah there we go look at that that is unbelievable look how accurate the flowers are that did not exist so there we go i mean i don't know what more i can possibly say than what i've already said this is literally going to change the game when it comes to photography photography as we know it i think is going to change almost overnight we will have now photography and we'll have image making and digital art and where the line will be drawn i don't know i also don't know how we can we can believe what we see anymore because it is so easy to change reality now within just a few seconds. And this isn't just something that's going to be able, you know, something that's available to a few select people. This is now mainstream and this is the beta. So where will we be in one year, in two years, in five years? I don't know. All I know is that we have to try and embrace this technology to do the best job we can and produce the best photographs and images we can for our clients. It's going to be really interesting and see where this all goes i i don't know i don't know I, I i know i need to go to bed now but yeah i hope you've enjoyed this video and it's enlightened you whether that's going to make you happy or it's going to make you sad i can certainly see it both ways i don't know but as always thank you very much for watching please please do let me know what you think in the comments is it good is it bad i think i know where i sit and uh there we go. So please let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time.